Welcome back to Ike Live. Thanks for hanging in there with us. It's been an amazing show so far. This is the kayak special. We've been talking kayaks all night with Keaton and Ron. Also had an amazing football player on tonight, Pete. One that's going to get beat by the Eagles. The enemy. The enemy. <laughs> uh, earlier in the show, Mr. Robinson. And uh, now, I, I, I will tell you, we got a lot of show left, Pete. This is incredible. It's one of those ones you feel like it's we've been on for four hours. But we got a lot of show left. I think we will be. We do. We got a lot of show left. Hey, you know, I, I want to make a quick mention. Yes. Uh, I want to, I want, we talked a little bit about sonar and electronics and Lawrence and how to download waypoints. I want to welcome... Lawrence to the Bash University oh, family. Welcome, Lawrence. What? Uh, we're you. Gonna, yeah, we're we're very pleased to be working with Lawrence this year. We're going to be teaching people how you know how to how to use their sonar from beginners to advanced. That's what we do at Bash U. We're going to be doing it with Lawrence products. Uh, very very excited. They make some amazing stuff, uh, and that's new for this year. So, thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, Lawrence. It's pretty amazing. Uh, I want to do this. I know everybody's been waiting for some of these awesome prizes we have tonight, Pete. And I want to go ahead and do the first of a few trivia questions that we have tonight. I, I got one here. Okay. Is Dave dressed for Zoolander 2? <laughs> Dave, are you dressed for Zoolander 2? True or false? True. True, yes. <laughs> Dave, uh, I'm whoever I'm just, uh, whoever just asked that, go ahead and, and put your information through. You just want a prize. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I Tag a warehouse gift pack to that one. I, I, I'm perfecting my new look. <laughs> <laughs> no, remember how he had blue steel? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're working I on got, it. I got silk blade. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's coming up, man. Uh, Brian, Brian's zooming in on your of pants there. Is, Dave. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. So everybody listening and watching, and and uh, Brian and Eric, are we going to do it the normal way, right? We're going to ask the question. The first one that comes through the IM on IkeLive.com, yep. the first correct answer is the official winner. That is correct, correct. Okay. And so here it goes. And for the Hobie H crate, Woo! which, by the way, is amazing. I love my H crate. Um, the question is, who is the only two-time winner of... Hobie World's Fishing. Who is the only oh, two-time winner of Hobie World's Fishing? If you know the answer, send it through on the IM. First one to get it right. We're going to have you put your information through, and you're the winner of an H crate. Pete, how about that? That's very exciting. Just like that. It happens just like that. Do you know the answer? I do know the answer because I have it written down right in front of me. All right. <laughs> no, I know. I know. <laughs> you do, too? I do. I know. I, know. I don't have it written down, wow. but I know what it is. That's Keaton, do you know? One, we had to do one easy gimme. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's... Yeah. That, I mean... Can you Google that? You could Google you it, but, Google that. but you have to know it because the dudes that are Googling it are going to lose. There's going to be somebody out there watching just can hit that knows. Right they now. can just. They would have done it already. He now. was a guest on Ike Live. You're oh, right. Yeah. Hint. Sub hint. He was a guest on Ike Live mm. after Rick his James. most recent. <laughs> Rick James. <laughs> Rick James, <laughs> Rick James is incorrect, oh. but. Oh. Jethro. Jethro got it. Jethro? Steve Lassard. Correct. <laughs> Jethro guess Steve Lassard. That's correct. Uh, uh, Jethro Je of Jethro Tall fame. You are the winner of an H crate. Jethro, please put your information through. Eric will not put it through. And uh, we'll send address it to you. <laughs> and we'll ship that H crate to you sooner than later. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. You never know. Uh, we're going to do this, too. We're, we're, we're going to uh, open up an MTB, which I think is really cool. I'm going to get uh, – we have two boxes open up tonight. <laughs> but before we do that, Bastard. I got something that we have to do. Uh -oh. I don't know if you knew this, Keaton, but when you're on the couch, every single guest that comes on in studio – on. Every single guest that comes on the show that sits on the couch has to play the Ike Live Rapid Fire. Bring it, bring okay. It, bring, it, bring it. Ike Live Rapid Fire. Here it comes. And just to let you know, the only rule, Pete, there's one rule about that couch when we ask these questions, and it is the absolute truth. You have to speak the truth. It's like Wonder Woman's lasso. <laughs> It's wrapped around your body, I'll test tight <laughs> and hot, a lot of heat, everything's wet. From a plug. 
When the lasso's on you, you must tell the truth. Okay. <clears throat> Drum roll, please. <clears throat> True or false? Question number one. True or false? <clears throat> Hobie Kayaks is now working on a brand new pedal drive system that bases its propulsion strictly on Jedi Mind Tricks. False. False! <laughs> Okay, no Jedi mind trick. That's correct. That's, That's correct. correct. <laughs> that one is correct. <laughs> Had to go through thinking about non competes and all. You know, right. It's hard to answer those. Right. Things. And you guys have a lot of stuff in yeah. the works, but yeah. that Jedi mind trick is not it's, one. It's yeah. telekinesis, but it's not Jedi, so. Well, it's what, what to... portion you have patented. It's, yeah. yeah. You get it. So. Yes. Okay. <laughs> true or false? Another true or false for you. Patrick Sabeel, who we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Of course, you met him. Told that story. Uh, designer of the Magic Swimmer. Based that lore design off a Hobie kayak. <laughs> True or false? False. False. <laughs> that is correct. That's also <laughs> Mike, did you did you write these in your script? Like, <laughs> did you write these yourself? No, no, I did. This is scripted for me. Did you, did you write these with your left hand? <laughs> okay, question number three. This is not a true and false question. It's a regular question. Uh, who has a better chance of flipping over a Hobie kayak? <laughs> Dave Brodzik? <laughs> Ish Monroe? Shrek from the movie Shrek? <laughs> or, 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 or Shrek what from Smokey and the Bandit? No, you know Shrek, what I, mean? Shrek. <laughs> I gotta go back now. You messing up my sorry, phone. sorry. <laughs> who has <laughs> who has a better chance of flipping over a Hobie kayak? Dave Brodzik, Ish Monroe, Shrek of the movie Shrek, or <laughs> Hank Parker? <laughs> That's actually a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> and and the answer is all four of them. Ah, that's correct! <laughs> would, would have to get in the kayak in order to flip it over. That's correct. Yeah. What about Shrek from Welcome Back, Connor? How would he get <laughs> Shrek. <He's>... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Connor, Mr. Connor. He wouldn't, he wouldn't flip it. He wouldn't flip it. But, Dave, by the way, the little there's a little sidebar note. Yeah. It says... The reason Dave would flip his, his head is so big. Oh. I just, it, on the, the answer sidebar. is no, nobody would flip it. <laughs> they don't flip. That's right. They don't flip ever. You could fall out of it, but you <laughs> right. don't flip it. Right. Okay. Question number four. <clears throat> is, it, <laughs> is it true that at Hobie World 6, the Korean team launched a missile at the Chinese team? <laughs> <laughs> That is false. It's false. That is false. Something went down though. I remember that something the, happened. That was the uh, Chinese Taipei. Right. Yeah. I yeah. remember. There was a little, little scuffle a little... amongst countries. We had a flag issue. There was. Yeah. It's like the Olympics. You know, yeah. like we, yeah. what, what we, you know, those two entities um, don't get along unless they need to get along. Then they get along. And we, we thought, well, why not just do what the Olympics do? And there was still some. Uh, Flag issues, a little, little bitterness and anger between wow. them. What, what, what was the issue? Yeah, let's get deep. China doesn't recognize um, Taiwan as, right. as a country. Right. And so... And the uh, flags were up on each kayak. Yeah, was e there... each each kayak, each door, their their hotel rooms. And so it's, um, you know, that's that's not our battle. We were just, you know, we just kind of want right. to... Right. We want to all fish. Hon honor it's, everybody. We're about camaraderie. So they wanted the fishing. flag taken down? Basically, yes. Is that yes. what happened? Yeah. You guys need an octagon. It was a, <laughs> yeah, it, it was really interesting, though. It, it was something I hadn't experienced before. So, um, yeah, you know, uh, all's well that ends well, and everything ended well. So, um, onward to Hobie Fishing World 7. Right. But, yeah, that was uh, a little point of contest going on there. But no, no missile I, launch. I had forgotten about that. <laughs> <laughs> no missiles were launched. Launch. Firecracker? No missile launches. <laughs> no missile launches. Actually, Mike, Mike did throw his rod once when he broke off a red fish. What? Right? Yeah. That, has, that actually yeah. is that... part of the next question. Oh, okay. okay. I'm glad okay. you said that. And this is the final question, the most important. You're almost there. You're 90% there. Here it goes. A lot of pressure on this one, Keaton. 
you've seen a lot of amazing things in your time with Hobie Kayaks. Which of the following was the most unbelievable? One, seeing a 350-pound Goliath grouper caught from under a pier. It's pretty amazing. You got to admit that. Two, seeing the lineup of hot chicks following Morgan's kayak out to sea. <laughs> Three, what? watching Chad Hoover lose a kayak tournament to me and then watching him shave his beard live on Facebook. Or, number four, watching me freak out and throw a rod on losing a subpar redfish by the side of the boat. As, as great as it was watching you freak out and throw a rod, it, it was really fun watching you uh, beat Chad Hoover and have him shave. That's you know, correct! On, on, on his home waters. <laughs> That's and, correct! Uh, you know, and all the stories of him having pinned fish and tied up fish. Right. And, yeah, knowing their names. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and for you to come through um, in adverse conditions right. and, and take that championship. Right. It was really great. Dude, here's the I, – I, I just got to go back. We never really talked about it, but I want to take this time to talk a little bit about it. So it was great because he like he's a smack talker, but in a playful way, you know what I mean. So I was having fun with it, but just talking smack, sending the tweets, you know, you know, you never fish, you know, you never fish out of your kayak, you can't kayak fish. But I was like, it's cool, it's cool. And going there the whole time, he kept saying to me, well, you know, do you want to put a, a money on line, or you know, do you want to have a you know an end goal to this tournament, you know? And I'm like, ah, no, 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 we'll just fish, we'll just fish, you know. The whole time I'm thinking, man, I got to come up with something good. So it was, it happened to be like, it was after the classic and I had that big thick beard and I'm getting rid of it anyway. Dude, it's like this monster's beard and it's hot. It's getting, going to get hot. And I'm like, I'm shaving my beard anyway. So I waited till that night when we were doing our pre-tournament little deal, a little Facebook and live. And was he happy with his beard? He, he, I've never seen him without a beard. All right. Ever. He's okay. one of those dudes <laughs> that always has a beard. All right, right. So I just straight up brought it up live, like, okay, here, I came up with something now. The loser has to shave their beard. So it was a win-win for me. But, dude, I swear to you, the demeanor in Chad just changed, changed dude. <laughs> and he really started, like, I saw, like, he was kind of like just whatever, whatever. Dude, I don't think he went to bed to, like, midnight. He's out there working <laughs> on tackle. Dude, he had more stuff than Morgan had when he launched. He had 20 rods. Tackle box is spilling over. Dude, I had I had a bait cast there and a spinning rod. Is all I brought with me. Wow. Like literally yeah. like a little flambeau box, threw it in the H crate, and that was it. And dude, you could see the you know what I mean? Like You the, spun him oh, out. Oh, I spun him out, dude. So bad. And that was the <laughs> that was really successful. But here was the other thing what I thought was interesting. So he hired Gene Jensen, aka Fluke Master, to come down and tape this. Like, literally, the entire thing was taped. And Gene's this amazing camera guy, and he's very good at interviewing, and he, he got me with all these big fish catches and all this stuff, and he's, you know, th did a great job of capturing the whole day. The footage never surfaced. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. I've never seen one minute of that thing. So it's like he lost. Yeah. He had to shave his beard. And then it just, like, never happened. <laughs> like, it was all made up. You know what I mean? But Chad, if you're watching and you want to call in, Brian, put the one eight hundred number and we'll we'll call, we'll talk to Chad. Oh, I'm pretty sure Gene's watching. Uh, Gene's watching. Yeah, that, Chad, that, text that, me. I'll give you the can, number. Uh, yeah, that's the great thing about about kayak fishing, and and all these guys are really good anglers. I mean, yeah. Chad's a good angler. He's Ron, a good angler. Ron's yeah. a good angler. These guys, I mean, are really good at their craft. And so when it comes to competition, like I said, it's all fun and games until you're at stage. Yeah. And weigh in. Yeah. I mean, and all that's competitions built and. Uh, you know, it's not easy to go win one of those tournaments. It takes a, a lot of skill, and these guys put in the time. And I think, I, actually, we have footage of Ron, because we always, when we do the Hobie Bass Open, we're filming this thing. And Ron talks about fishing so, it's slow, and he's got the entire season season of uh, Downton Abbey on his Lowrance. Yeah. And as he's fishing brush piles, he's watching those episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and, wow! Yeah, there's he, a way to slow down. Yeah, he comes. <laughs> a, you know, he's a big tough guy, but he's really you know sensitive. And <laughs> wow! <laughs> just, just kidding, Ron. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, nah. That's amazing. All right, I I'd like to do this real quick, Bry. We're just gonna break up the flow of the show for one second. Let's do an MTB box unboxing. 
I think let's do it. Uh, we'll do one. Uh, Dave, grab one over there. We'll do one on your side. And Pete, me and you will share this box. Uh, as everybody watching knows, uh, Mystery Tackle Box is the presenting sponsor of this show. And we are the only live podcast, Brian, that does an unboxing. That's right. That's correct, that right? That we're aware of. Okay. All right, here we go. After I, seeing us do these unboxings, I'm surprised they want us to continue. All right, I love, I love this, I love this part of it. To me, good point. This is the most amazing yeah. part of a mystery tackle box unbox, unboxing, and it goes like this. It's the sound of that tape breaking. You ready? Here it goes. Listen. Did you hear that? Right. I'm gonna do it on something. this side. The sound of that tape breaking. Here it goes. Here it goes again. Okay, we've got that, and. I'm going to go ahead and go in my box. And, uh, uh, huh. Root around in there. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to pass it over to Pete. Of course, this is the black box, the pro box. And the bait that I selected is a quarter ounce Randy Howe swimming runner. Which is a fish head spin. This is a fish head spin. Uh, I, I love it because you've heard a lot about this. Casey Ashley actually used this style of lure to win the Bassmaster Classic. The year's yep. back, Pete. Yep. And here it goes in a little two-pack. Um, and it's uh, Randy Howe promoting it. Little horsey head looking bait. Nice little oversized blade. Looks like a real ball bearing swivel. Pretty nice. Fish head spin. Very, we were talking about that at the last Bass You Live. That style of bait. Very well could win the first two tournaments of the season. It's cold water bait, and especially if there's blue back herring. Yep. Can't beat a fish head spin. No. no there you, you have it. There you have it. Well, here's here's what I saw. This jumped right out at me because I'm going to be talking about this. That's what I was at the, at the Bash U. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the 45 caliber bullets. <laughs> but, the uh, you know, I'm going to be giving a seminar about Carolina rig fishing down in Alabama this year. And uh, this is cool. Uh, it's a Carolina rig kit, so everything's right Ooh. there for you. Kit. Um, you, know, you got your swivel, you got your weight, you got your clackers. Uh, for you know, you want to get introduced to fishing, um, it's all right there in the Carolina rig kit. If you want to get introduced to that deal, so that's pretty cool. All in one spot. That's what I like. What do you got Very over nice. there, Dave? That I well, I stole yours. So you got to pick it no, up. No, I got it. King. I got it. It's early season. I got a Strike King Red Eye Shad. Yeah, that's that's caught a few fish this time of year, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, in the south, we wanted crawfish color. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. A little red, little Texas red on Ooh. there. Might that's a three-quarter ounce, too. Three-quarter? It's it. Uh, you know what? It is. It is a big one. It felt yeah. heavy. So, uh, yeah, Rayburn Red. Yo, don't sleep on that three-quarter, bro. Don't sleep on the three-quarter. Don't sleep on <laughs> that three-quarter. Three no. Nah, Where'd that come key, from? Key that three-quarter is going to my backpack. See ya. <laughs> It'll be with the other lures, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's got a lot of other cool they stuff. They were only rare Bagley's. It's not oh, like they yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know I never bait. see them. <laughs> we got a catch company. We got a, speaking of baby brush hog looking dudes. You got a catch go. A little soft. Great little bait looking there for the back of a Carolina rig. So we got some really cool stuff here too, including a Lucky Craft jerk bait. Mystery tackle box. I can't wait to see what the uh, elite mystery tackle box is. Is going to be. I'm I'm interested in that. Is, I wonder if it has a different price point. Like it comes, you know, so that you're going to get different crankbaits or higher dollar crankbaits. I'm curious. Perhaps. The I elite. would think so. I mean, it'd probably be a, probably be fifty bucks. Right. The, you got the pro, and then you got the elite. I can't wait to see what the difference is. But Mystery Tackle Box, the sponsoring uh, company of the or the title sponsor company of the Ike Live Show. Thank they you are guys. Cool. Thank you guys. It's like Christmas every month. I love getting them at my house. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> I know Becky does. <laughs> she loves it. She loves it. Uh, let me remind everybody watching, we want to hear from you. If you've got a question or comment about anything you heard in tonight's show, uh, please hit us up on our IM. I, yes, Brian, I got some. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Give, me, give me one thing. I do want to talk about something. Dave brought it up. We had kind of a funky start. To the beginning of the show, Pete, with mm -hmm. some audio difficulties, but I, I I have to bring it up because I know uh, everybody in the fishing world right now it's on their radar, and uh, I do I do want to bring it up a little bit, Dave. We talked about 
um, we had a we had an accident last week uh, at an FLW event down at Lake Okeechobee, and an angler lost his life. And I I just want to I want to talk about it a little bit and flush it out and you know get get your guys thoughts on it. Obviously it's 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 sad. Um, you know. I didn't know the guy, and I'm devastated that it happened. I'm devastated for his family. I'm devastated for his friends. And, and, and I, I, how, how should we start to speak? Because I want to address it because but, I oh, think it's first, important I, I to think, look I at. Think the first thing is to let people, I guess, know what happened. Well, Brian has a right. pretty decent understanding of how it went down. So, do you, well, I don't know if you want to give that. Uh, he, he's looking at me with shocked eyes uh-huh. over there. So we, <laughs> But what... What transpired recently is at a bass fishing tournament down on Lake Okeechobee, um, there was a there was an incident, an accident of some type. We the the thing, and I don't know if you have any details that you can enlighten us with, but I I, I don't because what I've read and what I've seen, there's very few details about it other than the the boat was um, you know went level flotation in the heavy water. Um, the the driver was able to stay with the boat. The co-angler was lost out of the boat and was not able to be recovered and uh, unfortunately perished after, geez, I don't know, a week-long search. Uh, they finally did find him, uh, unfortunately, deceased. So we lost we lost one of our brothers. Yeah. You know, when you know when we enter these, these derbies, when we participate in these things, we're so excited. It's like what we love, right? We all, we're all like-minded, like you were saying earlier. And... Um, you never ever think that that something like this is going to happen, right? Or could happen when you know you're out participating in one of these things, and it did, unfortunately. And uh, you know, our heart, hearts, thoughts, and prayers go out to his family. Um, it's just it, it's devastating. It's devastating. It's devastating. And by the way, uh, his name was uh, Nick Kaler. Am I saying that right? K Y L O R. Uh, he does have a GoFundMe page set up. Uh, in, in, invite everybody to to help out, and we should try to get that up somehow if we can. Mm-hmm. If not, if you go back to my Facebook a few posts ago, I posted a link to it. Um, if anybody watching wants to help out with that, it's I, testament to to the weather though. And and I I want to I, I want to talk about that because Mother Nature is bad. You have to. She's bad. Mother Nature. She's bad. No doubt. And, and this was definitely a weather incident, right? And it I mean, seems to be. Yeah. It seems to be. And I can remember so many events where they canceled it. In fact, one last year on Champlain where they canceled it because of the wind. Mm-hmm. And I, I was I was like, my my response was, come on, man. I've been in worse stuff than this. The wind's hardly not even blowing. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, that there's a lot of responsibility for a tournament, for a tournament director to say this is fishable or this is not fishable. They had... Uh, Small boat, small craft advisories that day. A wind coming out of the north. They launched out of Okatani. The guy was running the South Bay. He made a decision to cross the middle of the lake instead of going to Rimditch. I mean, have just, you ever been out in Okeechobee when the Okeechobee wind blows in the middle? Okeechobee is giant. Dude. So I giant. It gets my, nasty. My very first big tournament I ever fished. I fished Okeechobee, and I made, mm. I started to make that exact mistake. Yeah. Went across the middle in a January tournament, and finally was like, oh my god to go back the other way and, and, and run the rim right yeah, right yeah, but right. I, I started making that same mistake to save 40 minutes yeah mm-hmm. you know yeah because they have a rim canal for those of you that have never been to lake okeechobee it's a bowl it's like 25 miles in diameter and it, it just makes a circle and uh it's all it, it's about 10 to 20 feet in the middle and um but you have a rim ditch which uh runs the circumference of the lake which in rough conditions can be used to navigate. It takes you a lot longer because you have to you have to drive the circumference. But um, sometimes you got to pop out of the rim ditch and go around, right? And go yeah. back in, and you got to learn to run yeah. the, the grass flats because even in real rough wind, if you're up on the grass flats, the waves the, they're shallow and the waves will get knocked down um, to, yeah. to manageable wave sizes. But if you're out off the bank at all, it's I like mean, an ocean. It's, it's like an ocean. It's it's, like- it's nasty. The waves get real close together. They white cap, and they're they're just a terror to try to negotiate. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know, and I don't know if that's what happened. You know, we we've we've you know we don't really have a definitive report on exactly what took place and right. whether there was an error by the driver or it was just an unfortunate condition. Uh, because there's a lot of stuff to hit. Anytime you're running a high performance boat like that, 
I mean, you could hit a log, you could right. hit an alligator, you could, you know, any number of things could happen when you're going 70 to 80 miles an hour that can put you in harm's way. Don't know if that's what happened. You know, don't know if it was a decision to drive across the lake that might have been a bad decision. We don't know. Um, I, I I look forward to knowing, and I hope that someday or sometime soon, you know, there yeah. may be some light shed on exactly what transpired. Yeah. So we can kind of digest it, wrap our arms around it, learn from it, you know. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, they said, I think that I read on Bass Fan that in a few few weeks they would have a, a full report, mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking at the incident. Yeah, Dave. No, yeah. I was just I, – I was talking to Brian when this happened, the day after it happened. I was just curious, and I, I, I wanted to talk to Tom, our buddy Tom, who retired from the Coast Guard. Like, how, how do they how do they plan these search grids? Like, how do they how did they miss this guy if he was just floating? I don't know. You and know, it's like, a, and it's such a massive, massive body of water. I know, but I'm just wondering, like, how like, how does it work when you're searching? You know, right. like. That right, you were able to miss this guy. I, I think one of the big problems was that they never had a, an initial point, right? You know, like twelve right, hours they, later, yeah, they, found, they found the boat You're and right. his driver washed up on yeah, the rip rap. That point. was the only thing that was alarming to me. Was seemed like, and again, I don't want to play Monday morning quarterback or whatever, but it seemed like it took a long time for things to for them to realize there was that issue, right? And, and if there was anything that could be addressed. As far as improving upon what we currently do, right? It, it was that. You know, one of the things, Brian, you know people I mean? that, that that time delay between when it happened, you know, if there's a but way people to, have a bad day on the water and they just pick the boat up and leave. Yeah, you know, and then what do they do? If, you know, like, do it's we have point. the key fob? I don't know. Maybe I got it. I don't know where it's at. You know, deactivate the Coast Guard for a guy that could have possibly left. I'm sure there's a hundred missed phone calls to the guy. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, and I, don't know. And I say, point, say that man. a lot at Bass Opens. And at Strand Series, you hear the, you hear them, the tournament directors, the meeting say, "Look, if for any reason you got to go home early, for any reason you check you know, in, you know, let check know. in or let us know, yeah. you know, uh, they say that, you know, yeah. um, for this exact reason, yeah. right? I actually right. saw a yeah. Facebook post on this one where they were looking for them, I know, and, and asking people to call in if you know they, wow. they they knew anything or had heard from mm -hmm. them, right? So it's a bad bad feeling. We you know we put on tournaments." We do our best, and it never fails. Weather's going to get bad. Yeah, you know, every every few events you have one. Yeah, and there's no worse feeling when that squall comes through and not have people accounted for. Yeah, and you're just yeah. praying that they they found cover some in kayaks especially. Right. I was just going to say, yeah. you know, in in a bass boat, you know, we can move. You know, we can, you know, in in thirty seconds, you can cover a mile or whatever and get it get out of it. But boy, if it comes sneaks up on you in a kayak. Man, you're you you don't have that mobility. Yeah, that's that's got to be a concern. It's a horrible feeling when you, when you talk about solutions. You know, some of the obvious solutions would be to to and we we've even talked about this to have some sort of uh, you know using cell phones to track anglers on the water. But the anglers don't want that. Right. You don't mm -hmm. you know you don't want to give up where you're fishing. Right. So there's a at the high level of competition in professional tournaments, you know, there there are better ways um, to keep track of, of anglers, but anglers don't want that i mean and for right right reason so um it, it's just a very sad situation mm -hmm. and you know one of those like you said you hope we can learn something from it i hope so I, you know it makes me think because as fishing in on the boater side you know on the pro side i i've been doing this a long time i've been out in 12 foot ways before a million times and you know and uh not a million times but enough times that i respect the water and i'm not you know, I'm willing to take that risk. You know, like, you know, I'm willing to do it because I know in order to get to those big smallmouth out of the middle of Lake Erie, you got to drive those big waves. Mm -hmm. and, and I've learned how to do it pretty good, you know. But what I don't think about is this guy sitting next to me. His life's in your hands. His life is in my hands. That, yeah. that is hoping that I'm going to make a good decision. Yeah. You know, and not going to put him in harm's way. And, um, you know, that it just causes me to think, you know, like, Hey, I, I'm willing to make that risk, you know, and and maybe I need to talk to that person about, you know, this is a little bit more about this is the risk that we're taking, and you know, just get that communication going, and because right. uh, yeah, I mean, he's got a family, he's got kids, he's just like I do, and uh, you got that responsibility, and and even though it's not a co angler on your side, it's it's a marshal, it's, it's, it's the same, it's, it's the, the same, same exact thing, right? You got you got somebody that you're caring for, 
And, uh, you know, we, we, we have a responsibility for that as boaters. I mean, I, I, what I see happening with this is universal PFDs with immersion activation GPS yeah. devices. Yeah. Right. That's what you're going to wind up seeing. Right. I've Upon, seen yeah, that comment. Yeah, you're going to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Insurance is going to it's it's going to be a matter of liability is what's going to is what's going to push it, not anything else. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what was he was was he wearing a PFD? You know, <coughs> why was he so hard to find? You well, know? Mike Mike alluded to the fact that it was hours, yeah. and they had no point of 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 impact to start from. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Again, we're speculating because we don't know, but I mean. There was hours. Guy wasn't found till dark. Yeah, and they and they were yeah. they were horrible conditions. You had right. you had big wind. You had big waves. You had cold water. You had water in the fifties. Mm-hmm. You had air temperatures that morning. I heard was in the thirties or forties. Thirties, yep. Yeah. That's that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. You know, if if you get in the water, you know. Yeah, that that's super tough conditions, and I I've been in that situation where I've had to leave my boat, and um and I was shocked. Like we didn't have heavy winds, and we didn't have heavy current. But and and it was such that, but I was I only had seconds. I didn't have time to anchor my boat, and I grabbed my fish out of live well, jumped into somebody else's boat to carry my fish in to weigh them in, and let my boat drift, thinking you know I'll weigh them in, you know get my points or whatever, and and then come back out and and get my boat, and uh, you know and, and did that hours to find my boat. You'd be amazed Hours. how quick they drift. I was going to tell you that. Yeah, you know, just yeah, with wow. no wind, very little current. You know, we're 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 driving all over the place trying to find this thing, and and yeah. finally we did. But it was sitting, you know, this high out of the water and was red, and we couldn't find it. You know, I, much less somebody floating. We launched out of know. Plattsburgh, and there was a guy. Right. No one would help this guy. Same situation. Mm-hmm. He had to abandon his boat on the Vermont side, mm-hmm. and he told me where he did, and I was like, whatever, dude. So I took him out there to go find it. Man, I was like, oh, my God, why did I just keep walking? Like, this <laughs> boat drifted. This boat drifted like six, seven miles, man. Yeah, like, it, wow. was, it was just gone, dude. Yeah. Pete, you know? What do you mean the boat was red? <laughs> it was your boat. Mother. Ah. <laughs> That's the boat you let crash up on the road. Sold, <laughs> sold you a ghost ship. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Brian's ghost. <laughs> ghost so, ship, dude. So, was so it really? I, I didn't tell you that at the time of negotiation. Damn dude, it. Brian got, <laughs> Brian, yeah, Brian got rid of the flower pot, dude. The flower pot's gone. So what do you do now? So what's going to change immediately? I mean, Dave kind of touched on what's ultimately probably going to happen in the long run, but what's the immediate? Do you put a tile, those little tiles in your boat, so if you have to leave your boat, you can find your boat? I know a handful of bass wives mm. who have those apps on their husband's phone so they know where they are at all times. Yeah, that's dirty. Yeah. No, no. It's a safety thing. <laughs> that's because they're up to You something. know what I mean? Like, yeah. your yeah. husband's out in big water and you don't hear from him if there's any way to find him. I mean, I know, you know, people who saltwater fish, freshwater fish. I mean, it's a safety thing. Yeah. Like, what know, are the instant repercussions? Man, I, I don't know what to do immediately. I think immediately we got to have we have to get more information immediately right what exactly transpired and uh before we can you know react and and make some calls like that uh we we've got to figure out what exactly what took place because well, right now we're all still in the dark and guessing but we do want to know where our guys are. immediately you know? it's easy you you, you can like absolutely I put an app on your phone you can have the tournament director can absolutely track the boats by having a uh, a jeep a global positional assisting uh, in the boat they can track yeah. The tournament director would just, you know, that anglers yeah. have to understand that only the TD is going to have access to it. Yeah, but Jacob Wheeler's going to pirate that information. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. but that's what that's that's what you're immediately going to probably see. That's a quick fix. Yeah, that's a quick fix. A beacon <laughs> inside of a boat. That's 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 immediate. Well, that that's going to be the biggest. That's going to be the biggest concern. Is guys are going to uh-huh. worry about security. They're like, hey man, once we start putting this information out there, the competition is going to figure. it a way to scam it and get it and know where we are and know what we're doing. But uh, just like you said, the anglers don't want it. Okay. The anglers want to, they want to be private. But yeah, the but kind if there's something that only the tournament organization has access to, just... Agreed. I mean, yeah, that would certainly be the objective, right? They would be the only ones that have access to it. But you know the conspiracy theorists that run rampant oh, yeah, well, amongst this group. This. Well, no, <laughs> you know? It's important to remember this is, we see this because it happened at a high level. This happens more often, right? And it's it's ne- and it doesn't make the news except for local news. Yeah, and and it's probably True. more so those tournaments that would benefit from some sort of tracking system, but the funds aren't available. 
um, yeah. to really do it at that level. At the higher yeah. level, at least they can set an example. Right. But that's the reason this one is is so visible is because it happened at a major event. Yeah. And um, so you know, it's not the it, first time. No, no. It's not the first time. There's been uh, there's been a couple incidents over the years. Not very many. I mean, in the defense of the competi- of these competitions, it's amazing because, um, I mean, these boats are going in excess of 80 miles an hour, some of them, and uh, running through some I credit, water that's amazingly but I credit, dangerous. I credit us. I credit the anglers. I yeah. don't credit the tournament directors by oh. making right decisions. I mean, we've been sent out into some horrific crap, and we're all dumb enough to go. Yeah. You yeah. know? I mean, I've been sent out in the fog where I couldn't see you. Yeah. yeah, you know, down in Pickwick, that championship down in Pickwick, we were at. Remember yeah. that? Remember the fog yeah. on that one, dude? Yeah, and it, all you heard was engines. Yeah. You couldn't see anything. Well, dude. That's, that's and that good. that that's education. The the, the anglers really got to settle down because what what'll happen is they get so pumped up right during the championship tournament, and the the whistle blows and they go and they run into a fog bank, yeah. and they keep going. They're running off their GPS and and it, it can be you know just such a treacherous thing, but. You know, I, I gotta I gotta say, you know, Ray Scott was a visionary in this and bass, you know. I mean, there are reasons why, you know, we have level flotation. We have to wear our life jackets. We have to have a kill switch attached. You know, these you know, they created these rules. Yeah, but the rules didn't you know? there's a there's a real popular book in the business world called Safe by Accident. Right? And that that's kinda what this is. It's the anglers making decent decisions in horrible conditions yeah, yeah i mean that there are times that we should wish that these tournaments shouldn't be happening yeah and but it's so it's so difficult it is you got difficult. a fog bank down at pickwick right but it's not for 10 miles down the lake and you, you don't know until you get right. there the launch site there's no fog there's no fog and it's crystal clear the wind's calm it's okay to go and be safe you know um yeah, yeah geez. I mean, I you think about it, like, if you take it to the extreme, we would never, ever have a tournament. I'm not saying True. cancel. You know? I'm just saying that it, it, the rules aren't why this doesn't happen yep. more often. Yep. I'm crediting the anglers and their ability to handle their vessels. That's what makes it almost perfect. Yep. You know? All right, Dave, Dave says there's a group of ducklings crossing the launch <laughs> launching area. Yeah. Tournament shut down. <laughs> are they ducklings or are they coots? Because <laughs> they're coots, you just run them over. Eric, Eric, do we have anything coming in on the IM that any insight and in what people are thinking about this topic? No. My mic was my so, mic was taken <laughs> away from stole me. Stole the mic. No, man. I mean, a lot. You know, everyone's sending their condolences. A lot of people talking about the PDFs with you know a signal beacon. I think that's very important. At the end of the day, you know, this is just something that can't be avoided. Sometimes at the end of the day, like you said, Mother Nature. It's right. tough. Mother Nature's a bitch. Wa- at the end of the day, I wonder if it. I mean, it was it hypothermia that that was the cause of death, or was it impact? Um, was it drowning? I, don't know. I think we're gonna we'll we'll find yeah. that out. I'm sure. You know, I'm sure we're gonna find that out. Yeah, it's, it's so devastating. It, I would it's, say hypothermia. If yeah, I guess. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's sad. Let be me a good guess. Let me remind everybody again on this topic. Uh, if if you want to go help out, by the way, they've already raised this. This is great. It shows the fishing community coming together. They've as of today, they've raised eighty three thousand five hundred and forty dollars. Wow. Which is awesome. That's great. Which is That's great. That's incredible. And uh if, if anybody listening and watching they want to go help, uh go to gofundme.com N I K dash K A Y L E R. Uh so go gofundme.com backslash N I K dash K A Y L E R. Uh, mm-hmm. If you want to go help with that, very very tragic, very tragic. That is tough. You yeah, think, you know, you think about the tournament director. What now? He, you know, like he's living with that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, think about the the boat driver, you know, the family, yeah. the boat driver. I yeah. mean, I'm just thinking about uh, people that you wouldn't initially think of. Yeah, who had, you might blame themselves for, even though they should. You know. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm I, I'm going to try to be a better captain and and more. Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna learn try to learn from this experience. I look forward to. Uh, seeing what the tournament organizations decide to do. Yeah. Uh, I'll be in a kayak. You don't have to worry about me doing any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Oop, a little too rough. <laughs> Let me drive my truck to that pocket. <laughs> Drop it off there. Pocket. All right, let's let's cut, let's change the tone of the show a little bit. We've got another amazing guest. Let me remind you, this is Ike Live, the kayak special, and uh, we've got a guy coming on that is in in quote unquote mr kayak can't wait to talk to this guy and get his thoughts about kayak fishing and how it's growing uh we've got him coming on live right now 
Mr. Chris Payne joins Ike Live. Everybody, hi, Chris. Hey, fellas. How you doing tonight? I am doing wonderful. So let me let me clear the air. The uh, Mr. Kayak name is not something I gave myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That, that is something that uh, when I'm at like trade shows like ICAST or other things, when I'm talking to non-endemic sponsors, so uh, people that are not necessarily in the kayak world, so not like at the Hobie booth, but if I'm at Yeti or Costa or somewhere like that, they're like, oh, yeah, you're Chris. You're Mr. Kayak. You're the kayak guy. Uh, so I, I don't want it to seem like I'm naming myself Mr. Kayak. But do you I, make people – call you that like people who get a doctorate degree and they make you call them like doctor you know what i mean Do you uh, make people call you mr kayak no not at all <laughs> not 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 at all um usually usually i'm the crazy guy who uh writes reviews that's that's how a lot of guys in the kayak world know me that's funny because our very own intern eric that works here at the show has the same thing but he's known as mr lewinsky <laughs> oh wow it's kind of interesting hey, hey mike uh, mike real quick yeah so eric today i i, I uh, had to send him to get beer for keaton because yeah. keaton's got a an issue with oh my god oh th thank you yeah yeah <laughs> you're gonna air me out okay <laughs> All right, go, go for so it. he had go to get gluten-free beer yeah and he's like dude what the f you make me wear a dress now you're making me get that what's next a boob job <laughs> <laughs> what's next what was the level of punch like a boob job <laughs> a boob job <laughs> We didn't think of that. Male boot jobs are, are <laughs> all the rage right now, by the way. Calves. Maybe it is. Uh, Chris, t tell us a little bit. About how did how did you get into the kayak world? How did you get into kayak fishing? Okay. So, a funny story. Actually, Keaton was saying that he was in Abilene in 2005, 2006, I think, uh, when he was working with Sibyl. So, I grew up in West Texas, out that direction. And uh, I got married in late 2002. I had wanted a bass boat pretty much my whole life, got married, had zero money, and uh, negotiated from, no, you're not getting a bass boat, up to, you can have $200 to find something. <laughs> uh, and so uh, they had built an Academy Sports and Outdoors a couple years before, and I walked in there. They had one uh, Pelican little sit-in kayak. So. I'm 6'2". This kayak is only about nine feet long, and so I cram in like a sardine. But I, I paid my 200 bucks. I strapped it with some nylon rope onto my Tahoe and drove back <laughs> to the house, and everybody was looking at me like I was crazy because it, this would have been early 2003, so like February of 2003. Nobody was fishing in kayaks, and for sure nobody was fishing in kayaks at Fort Phantom uh, in there in Abilene, it, it, every, the bass boats would go by and they would stop. It was like seeing a circus stuck on the side of the road. They were like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, like, like and, it's a lifeboat. <laughs> yeah, they, they just didn't understand it. They're like, did, did your bass boat swamp out? What's going on? <laughs> uh, and so, um, you know, what drove me to do that is I – I had been bank fishing. I, w I went to college in Abilene uh, at Abilene Christian, and I had bank fished Fort Phantom Hill like the entire time I was there, all like six years. And so I, I wanted to get off the bank. I couldn't stand being on the bank, and I only had two hundred bucks. I mean, nobody was going to write a loan for me. I had student loans out the face. Yeah. There was no way I was going to get a boat loan. And so, two hundred bucks cash, it got me off the bank, and I started being able to chase the fish that I wanted to chase. And it just kind of took off from there. Well, that that's it's interesting because I very similar story, Pete. My first kayak was also uh, just a you know low end you know ringer from Dix and uh, and but it, but it was it was my entry point into it you know right. Chris if there are people watching right now and they're in that same scenario you know they've they've got a, a, a grand or two they don't have the money for a full size bass boat they're on the fence about whether to get into kayak fishing why should they well give us some other reasons why they should try it. Okay, so a, a personal a personal story for me. Um, I so I've been kayak fishing fifteen years now, and there is something that I've seen over those years that makes me really love it. But about the fourth paddle stroke, 
when you push off the bank and the noise of the world disappears, it kind of melts off and all you hear is that paddle drip and it's you and the fish and you're basically sitting right, right on the water and the ducks don't care that you're there. The deer don't care that you're there. The bobcats are prowling the banks. I mean, there is a certain connection that you make with nature that I just don't think that you can get going 70 miles an hour past all that stuff. Um, it, it will make you a better fisherman because it's going gonna, it's gonna to slow you down. It's not as yeah. easy to hop, skip, and jump. And so you're going to learn to read water better. You're going to learn to do a lot of things that you might not do if you had more electronics and a faster boat and that kind of stuff. And it's, a, it's physical exercise. It's mental therapy. I mean, the, the best therapist in the world is a kayak on the water. I, I mean, I, I just believe yeah. that so much so that we use, uh, you know, we use kayaks and programs like Heroes on the Water that I work with to take wounded warriors out and, and put them in these boats who, you know, they're wounded physically, they're wounded mentally, and you can just watch the stress and yeah. – they're, you can just watch it melt off of their face and, and they just become one. I mean, kayaking is unlike anything else in the world. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd agree. Uh, I, I know you're doing some work with, with Bass Pro Shops. I think that's a yeah. good gauge at looking at the fishing industry in general. Is it, do you see it too? Is, is kayak fishing the fastest growing segment of fishing right now? Would you agree with that? Absolutely agree with that. Um, I've, I've watched it over the last five years, and it, it's going to grow anywhere between 18 and 25 percent per year. We're getting, you know, I, I think the buzz right now is is a lot of uh, younger guys. So let's say guys sub 30 years old are getting into it. But I think a market that is missed that I'm dealing a lot with, you know, I'm I'm over 40 now, and and a lot of the guys that I talk to are actually people. So uh, let me pause for a second. Earlier in the show, you guys kind of alluded to, you know, people get a kayak and then they transition to a bass boat. Well, while that's true, some folks like me choose to stay in a kayak. I could, I could go get a bass boat tomorrow if I wanted one, but yeah. I, it's not my thing. My dad has one. I fish with him a few times a year. We go to Toledo Bend. We go to Sam Rayburn. Uh, and I, I find myself on the boat wishing I had my kayak with me. Right. Uh, so not all of us transition out. And then we see guys who have fished in bass boat tournaments and have had bass boats for 30 or 40 years. And now they're transitioning that yeah. 50 plus crowd. We're seeing them transition yeah. to kayaks, to crafts like the Hobie Pro Angler 14, which give them the stability because that's the primary concern for for folks that are a little bit older, not as nimble as they used to be. Um, and, and they're transitioning to that. They put a Hobie on a, on a trailer to where they don't have to lift it. They back it like they used to back their boat. Yeah. They get the exercise their doctor wants them to get. They get that peace of mind and they're not paying for gas. They're not paying yeah. for storage. They're not paying for a lot of that stuff. And so it's, it's, it's great. It's growing in, in the young segment, in our, you know, 50 plus segment. It's growing in the working dads who've got a couple of kids. It's growing everywhere. Yeah, I, I totally get that, Pete, because there, there's, you know, fishing out of a bass boat, it's complicated, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to get gas in the morning. You've got to grease your trailer bearings. You've got to back it up. You've batteries got to charge. Batteries charge. You've got to unhook it. Be your own it, mechanic. Be your own mechanic. You mm -hmm. got to, you know, there's just a lot of stuff to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And what I love about kayak fishing is it is it simplifies. It's it. much simpler. Isn't simplifies it. it. Yeah. You know, it puts it on puts it on a level where it's just you against the fish, and not yeah. all that other shit. You know, yeah. I love that. I I you know, I don't have a kayak, and I'm what I'm listening to everybody. Keaton, you know, Keaton, you know, we got to get that fixed. <laughs> <laughs> No, that ain't happening. <laughs> yeah. I don't share well. <laughs> the, uh, you know, but I look at this, and I, like I said, we were, I was sharing a story earlier about, you know, when I was in my canoe when I first started fishing, and, and I, I can see that, you know, is like, because uh, I love my bass boat. I love it, and I love the tournaments, and I love to do that stuff, and um, but I could see, you know, hey, I'd like to, today, I want to go fish that pond, yeah. you know, I want to go and be quiet. Yeah. You know, I, I, I want that 
as part of my day today. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, I could see, I can see it, man. It's, it's, it, it's, it's attractive to everybody that fishes. Like you said, transitioning back into a kayak or just doing both. But that's where I'm at. You know, right. I could have a, I could have a boat sit on the side of my house tomorrow if I wanted it. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm I like the idea of yeah. smaller and just getting in little well, tiny a lot, quiet a lot places. Of times and my son doesn't want to go today because he's got a, I don't know, whatever he's doing with a, a play date with a kid or something. You know what? I'm going to throw my kayak in the truck. I'm going to go fishing by myself. Yeah. Got a smaller yeah. window of time. It's yeah. easy. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. There's there's a lot of assets to it. You can see why it's grown. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, while it's simple and easy, those those accessories, you know, a fish finder, Chris, <laughs> I, don't, you, I don't know if you had one when you yeah. fish Phantom, but I go put in at the spillway, and, yeah. you know, I can go and, and have that lake mapped, and I can go find yep. fish you know tomorrow and jig them up and there's a lot of hybrid striper out there so you yeah. actually can get yeah. some oh, yeah. football sized fish and some crappie and but it's a it's an ugly lake isn't it muddy yeah it, uh, there's nothing to look at it's, <laughs> it's, it's plenty of fish in it so, red water and rocks with lots of fish but uh, those accessories are, yeah. are are the key to really i think it's what has is helping drive this because you know you're not missing out now right you know you, you go from the boat to the kayak and you still have those key features that yeah, you need. Yeah, you still have a full experience yeah. where yeah. You, you know you're not lost. You can still see the yeah. depth, you can still side image if you want and uh you know that's 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 beautiful. Yeah, accessory and seating. Seating's the last 5 years seating has improved oh. a lot. Yeah. And that's another another big feature that just the, the more comfortable you are, the more you want to be out on the water. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. Uh it, it's a great transition point. What other Chris, what other what 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 other trends what's new what are we going to see in the next five years with kayak fishing what's the next new thing in kayak fishing so i i won't say it's new for all companies but for a lot of companies so hobie's kind of been on this train with the evolve for a while but um kayaks with electric motors uh it we're seeing more and more companies develop it every year. Everybody's trying to get into that market. And I think that that speaks to kind of what we talked about earlier is trails are allowing it more and more. So uh, kayak bass fishing, the trails, the opens, the national championship allow motors. So they have a, they have a thrust kind of governor set in the rules. You can't have beyond X amount of thrust, but they do allow electric motors and that's not just for disabilities. And so you've got companies like Hobie, Wilderness, uh, Ocean Kayak, of course, had the Torque, you know, Minkota's working with those, Torquito's working with uh, with Hobie and several of the others. Jackson Kayak just announced this week, or well, they, so they've been talking about it for a little while, but they released the first public video of their motor. Electric motors are going to be all the rage. And so it's like we've cycled back 30 years to the old, you know, Bass Scrambler two-man little plastic boats with a trolling motor on the back of them. Uh, you know, it's like we've kind of, we're kind of cycling back to that. And I think a lot of that has to do with those of us, you know, so, so I'm 40 years old. I've been paddling 15 years. My rotator cuffs and my back are just shot. And so paddling, like Ron was talking about paddling 15 miles, just, isn't a reality for me anymore. An electric motor helps me with that. Now, pedaling is a different thing, but if you've got bad knees, pedaling might not work for you. And so, you know, electric motors are allowing a lot more people to really get into the sport, uh, to be able to move from point A to point B and fish, still be quiet. Not a whole lot of maintenance needed on an electric motor. I mean, keep the battery charged and put it in the, put it in the truck and go. I'm a, uh... As you're talking, Chris, I'm looking at some of our Twitter questions that are coming in, and yeah. we've got one from uh, Lisa M, who wants to know, will we see a glass bottom kayak soon? <laughs> uh, well, actually, those already exist. Ah, uh, Lisa. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you you can order one. There, there are some on Amazon, and uh, you, you can order those. They have them at some of the Caribbean resorts and that kind of stuff. Wow. Amazing uh, bed fishing tool. Yeah, right underneath you. <laughs> can you imagine? You could find smallmouth beds down to 15 feet. Be crazy. Did that you just drop sick. straight on them? Yeah. And you could go out naked so they could see your ass from up top, <laughs> which would be cool, oh. too. Or 
<laughs> Mike's starting to turn <laughs> into a gremlin. No, but. no, I'm not. I'm just saying. <laughs> think about that. That small mouth looking up there like, ooh, you know, he's kind of like getting all excited. Where's and Becky You at? just drop a tube <laughs> on him? Yep. Yeah. I can see it happening. Well, Mike, what was that? What was that? Gremlins or ghoulies or something? Uh, gremlins. Gremlins, yeah. Yeah. After midnight, they, they, they're, all, they're, they're all fuzzy and happy, and it, they hit that point, and then they yeah. get evil. Yeah. Yeah, you're right there. That, <laughs> yeah, as soon as Becky walked out of the room. I, I know. You notice that? <laughs> you're on the that edge. That's perfect. <laughs> Made the turn. Yeah, I did have a note on here, too, Chris, uh, from our yep. producer. Um, I know you're working with Bass Pro. Is there any way you can get them to unblock our phone number? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Brian and I talked a little bit about that, and I, I don't know that I have that kind of pool. Oh, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm the kayak guy. Mm. <laughs> well, give it a try for us, will you? Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, make I'll make call. some calls. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you. Uh, and I did have another really, really serious question for you, too, while I have you on the phone, Chris. On sure. a scale from 1 to 10, how happy were you when I beat Chad Hoover <laughs> and made him shave his beard off, with 10 being the most happy? On a scale from it's 1 seven, to 10. Is 73 an option? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is an option. 73. I'm going to go with 73. Everybody rooting hard against this chat. <laughs> <dude, man. Hey. laughs> Seems like a lovely person. He's lovely. Understand. He's lovely. Oh, yeah. Chad, Chad's great. I just love it when he gets his just desserts. You know, you, you run smack for that long, and then somebody just walks in and says, mm, nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's awesome. Uh, Chris, I tell you, thank, thanks for coming on. I, 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 love, uh, I love this kayak movement i uh, i think uh pete and i had the conversation about it before to me it is the future of the sport a little bit you know it's getting so outrageous on that high end yeah. it's getting new people involved it's getting different people involved it's giving us more access uh it, it, and that, I, that's just a great thing it's a great thing it's a great thing it's a great thing sport. yeah it's a great yeah thing. and and so let me let me help uh, help everybody out here with this. So I've, I've been writing from the layman's point of view from how to rig your kayak, how to get started with your first tournament, all of that stuff. You can find f over, well, now it's right at 10 years of archives of different articles on how to do that at paintoutdoors.com. If I can give a shameless plug there. Absolutely. Um, no, that's awesome. I, Thank you. I, I don't want people to have to try to figure this out on their own because I did it. I'm writing about the stuff that I have screwed up. I have found every way to do it wrong, and I've written about it unabashedly so that you don't make the same mistakes. So if you're getting started, paintoutdoors.com, how do I rig my kayak? What kayak should I look at? Yeah. What about stability? What about this? What about that? We've, we've got pretty much everything covered there. Well, thanks for being so sharing, because if Pete had your knowledge, it would be called like Payne University, and he'd have to sign up for it. He wouldn't be giving you any of those archives. <laughs> 1999. <laughs> it, it can be yours. <laughs> <laughs> Pete's always selling stuff. You know, Chris, or without the camel toe. Yeah, Chris, in all, all those years. <laughs> Damn, throwing it back tonight, Pete. Uh, <laughs> Chris, no way in all those years of making mistakes, and I'm, I'm I'm curious if one of these is in your archive. Did you ever cut your Mirage drive down too short, like Dave Brodzik <laughs> cut his trolling motor shaft? Um, I so I was attempting to repair a Mirage drive on a 2013 Outback uh, that I had, and in doing so, may or may not have heated it up with a heat gun and broken the rod in half ah. send it back <laughs> send it back we know it's a, a guy. lifetime warranty we know a guy yeah. right here. give you keaton's address yeah. actually my uh, my dealer in dallas got it taken care of mariner sales are great folks up there great hobe dealers uh they got everything taken care of when that happened back almost five years ago now uh but yeah absolutely Love, love the Hobies. Let me give you, let me give you one more quick story. So the in all of the reviews and stuff that I've done, that Hobie Outback actually did something crazy to me. Uh, we were at a lake in Murchison, Texas. It's called Calendar Lake. It's uh, a bunch of houses around it, and uh, we had gone with another family to this lake and took a bunch of kayaks, and we're getting all the kids out on the kayaks and letting people try it for the first time. And a big thunderstorm rolled in. Well, I've had this kayak maybe two weeks 
I leave it outside on the grass under the trees. Thunderstorm rolls in, lightning strikes a tree and drops half the tree on the back of this Hobie kayak. And I hear it crash and I'm like, oh my God, this is the end of it. I go outside, the kayak has flipped over. I flip it back over. It had a couple of scratches on it. I mean, wow. it was dang near bulletproof. It was amazing. Wow. So. Uh, I, I can't speak highly enough. Keaton and Morgan and Kevin and all the guys at Hobie, they, they make a tremendous product. And, uh, you know, if if you've got the cash to lay down for it, that that is, as you said this time, the Lamborghini, you've said in the past, the Cadillac of kayaks. So. Yes. Lamborghini, Ferrari, Cadillac, all rolled up in one. <laughs> <laughs> so that thing is. I think, uh, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Thanks for joining us. Great insight into the right. kayak world, and uh, I put you on the spot. Will you join us again next year for a kayak special? Absolutely. Give me a holler. Okay, appreciate it, Chris Payne. Everybody, Payne out there, Chris. <laughs> Great insight into the world of kayak fishing. You know, there. very much so. He touched on something that is absolutely critical to what we do, and he mentioned one of our dealers. And, like, these guys are – we have two, two levels of front line because, you know, you guys know we're, we're all over the place. Mm -hmm. We got guys making kayaks. We got guys, you know, handling the front office. We're out and about. And things are just always going on. And, what, and we, we forget about it, too. We've got a fantastic dealer group there. Yeah. You know, Kathy Algard yes. here um, has helped us out with awesome. things you need. You know, our, our dealers are just over the top, and they, they, they make it easy for us. And then you've got our fishing team, like Ron. You know, and it's funny. Our, our, our fishing team is, once again, scattered across. You mentioned Tom Michael. These guys are so committed to the sport, just like Chris. They're so committed to teaching people about kite fishing. Yeah. And, and it's, it's really, true. yeah, it's neat that, that and, and we don't, you know, you have bass pros, you know, and that's pretty much, you know, you can kind of copy cut a lot of people and doing, doing the same thing within the kayak world. You've got guys like I've got a guy down in Florida named Brandon Barton, that big time saltwater guy. Great videos. He's always putting up great YouTube stuff. You guys know Ron Champion. Um, we've got a guy in Kentucky. I, I stopped in a dealer, and we're talking to the dealer about some stuff, and somehow his team member comes up. The guy's name's Terry Elkins, and like, and then someone. So the dealer's telling me, and then here comes another person in, and they're like Terry Elkins, and then a lady comes in. and She goes, "Oh, y'all talking about Terry? We love him." Well, this is a guy, you know, that's just supportive, yeah. committed to what's going on. And I can just go, I name you person yeah. after person yeah. that at each level are there to grow the sport. Yeah. And that's what's really cool about this. So yeah. many people about growing the sport. Yeah, I, I see it a lot. I see it a lot. And the, and, and the kayak community is more of a community as a whole than other parts of the fishing industry, mm -hmm. which is which is neat. Eric, I saw your hand go up. What do you got, Eric? Yeah, I mean, this show has just been uh, an adventure back here in the producer booth, Woo! to say the least, especially the first hour. But one of the things that's definitely kept me going is uh, my lady friend, Becca, has been sending me these memes. And I got to say, some of these are absolute gold. Well, lady, first one. lady friend. Lady well, friend. Well, lady friend. Do tell. <laughs> yeah, you're you're way, way too young about? to call you gotta, lady friend. Lady friend? <laughs> you got to pull this up. What's oh, the lady's geez. friend's look name? At all, look, at, look at the top Shout right out face. For making these memes, man. <laughs> look wow, look at that. Look at all the faces of Brian. It's a potpourri. That's <laughs> Brian's ghost. <laughs> Hang on. Which one more. is when the Wait face, a minute. Which keep one that is more. when the feed crashes? Hold on a second. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. No, no. Keep that picture up there. I feel I feel like we're channeling some energy right here. Hold on. Wait, do you feel that? What is that? I hear something. Oh. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Not again. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> no, Thank you, Becky, me, for stating the obvious. <laughs> Just me, Mike, and Dave. That's the funniest character uh, ever. No, it's not. Like, is there's not a fruit on this sofa. <laughs> I need... I need uh, to find another uh, arm. We've got another meme. We've got another meme coming through. We've got another meme coming through. Let's put it through. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> wait, wait. What? B BFF. <laughs> oh, my God.
<laughs> oh my god. Oh, there you. We gotta get to the end of the show. The finale is amazing. Talk okay. Real quick, especially okay. I, no, well, I, let, let's do this. Hold on a second. <laughs> blah, blah, Don't rush blah, blah, me. Blah, blah. Let's do this. <laughs> Don't rush me. Let's do this. <laughs> let's do this. It's ten after. It's twenty after ten. We'll go at ten thirty. We'll call it. We'll call it the end. But I have another amazing prize. Ah, that I want to give away. Yes. People have hung in with us all night. I'm not going to disappoint. And Pete, we're going to go ahead and do another trivia question. And this one is for the Hobie Inflatable PFD. PFD. Beautiful PFD. Uh, very, very wow. comfortable. Fish out of it all day. Um, and here goes the question. Remember, first one that comes to only I am correctly is the winner. Quick, quick. What year? You ready for this? I'm listening. What year was the Hobie Mirage Drive introduced? And in what year was the Hobie Mirage Drive introduced? So you started with them at 2005. Right? <laughs> what the hell are you that? doing right I'm now? Trying to, I'm trying to think this, solve this problem. <laughs> I'm, asking, I'm just trying to get some information. Okay, you ready? I got this. I did this with Mike earlier. Okay. You're not False. eligible. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, I started it. False. With Hobie. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah no. I was, I was 10, 2010. With 2010. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't invent it. So, okay. Yeah, don't base it off my timeline. Well, was it invented when you got there? It had already been invented when I got there. Oh. So it's before 2010, people. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Give I you that clue. Oh, so yeah. it's before we got a 2010. Yeah. I have no idea. We got a winner. I have no idea. I was doing some research coming down here oh, and okay. in the last six years at iCast uh you're not gonna use this question right bro no we're gonna yeah, well, right. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't think you were gonna use it because he keeps asking other questions so i'm gonna ask this question in the last six years at iCast <laughs> the uh a kayak has won best in show how many times out of the last six years i'm gonna say all six four out of six years it's wow. been best in show across the board Wow. Of all products. That's amazing. Last six years. Pretty wow. we, we have a winner. It's a wave. Question. It's a wave of what's happening in our sport. Okay. We have a winner? What do we have? Jason Broach. He answers the correct answer in 1997. Jason Broach? Broach. No, Broach, Broach isn't eligible. Oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Broach, DQ'd. Broach. No, DQ'd. No, right. no. Uh, yeah. Broach, good job. Um, it, <laughs> Broach is getting famous. You know that? No. Yeah, you go look at some of the new Gerber displays. Uh-huh. Look at Broach's face is on there. Wow. He's hardcore. Broach is like one of those guys that has been fishing his tail off. Wow. And he's probably going to be, he may be competing with Ron in one of these The Gerber baby there. food? No, no, no. Label? No, no. Gerber, Gerber fishing tool. Oh. Like awesome, yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought, too, was the baby food. I thought you were ripping on the way he looked. <laughs> That's, yeah. He's a baby. Yeah. Right. Well, well done, Broach. No, he's the, the Mirage Drive, this is hard to believe, it's 20 years old. Wow, 1997 is when no we kidding. first introduced this this pedal drive. Wow. So so for 18 years we got made fun of because yep. we did it differently. Right. And and now what's I mean just now, because of the proficiency of pedaling and fishing and the growth hands free. And you talk about this growth of fishing mm -hmm. coming into the kayak. I mean you know you see a lot of brands going hands free now. Yeah. Pedal drive and it's Dude, just, it, it's it it's makes so difference. big in fishing for me. And like like I said I started in a regular you know low end kayak that had the paddle and then went to that pedal drive and it's it, it it's the deal like yeah. once you do it you, you don't want to go back to a if you want to fish if I don't you want to fish i'm not critical anyone wants to paddle absolutely it's like it, it's hands free paddle, fishing it's is beautiful key. but yeah hands free fishing so we have a winner okay so we have a winner or maybe not a winner yes, we're gonna no, go no, 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 later. no we have a winner I'm okay we have a winner <laughs> oh, right. nitro right. nitro troy i'm pretty sure he's perfectly <laughs> eligible to win this so he was the next one to guess it okay all right, so maybe we'll have something for Nitro Troy, too. Put your information through. You'll win something. I don't know what it might be. Uh, Keaton, you're, Keaton, you're on the hook for two of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just set us up big time, bro. Uh, <laughs> Becky, can you grab – I'd love you for you to talk a little bit about uh, – I do want to talk about the foundation a little bit. We've got two big announcements you want to make tonight, Miss Rebecca. You're going yes. to announce an announcement, or no, are you actually two, going to make actually, an announcement? Two actual <laughs> announcements tonight we're going to make here in Ike Live. I, Becky? What are my two? Uh, to, we'll talk about the dinner, and we're also going to talk about we can officially uh, register now for the kayak division. Yeah. All right, talk so let's, let's jump into that first. Okay. 
So the ticket window has been open for the boat tournament at very special low pricing. And the kayak division is now open as well. If you sign up before January 31st, you can sign up for $100 for the kayak division. There you go, Dave. Dave Brodzik. Oh, man, I'll sign up. on it. Um, if you head to the IkeFoundation.org, there's a link, or you can go straight to iAngler and look for the Ike Celebrity Pro-Am, which is July 21st, 2018. I'm winning this year. You should. I'm winning this year. They're your spots, bro. Hold on, man. I was, I was in a kayak that I wasn't used to. You know what I mean? Well, mm. Excuses. <laughs> excuses. <laughs> okay, so... It, so, anyways, that's super, super exciting that we are up and running. We're going to be announcing a handful of pros um, for the boat division very soon. We're just getting some confirmations all lined up. Um, and we actually have a handful of boats already signed up for because it's only... Yep. What seven hundred fifty bucks? I think if you sign up right now, so that's oh, two fifty per person. Early bird discount. Yeah, if you have three people on the boat, so it's pretty awesome. Um, hey, everyone, come out to Barrington Rod and Reel. We'll be at the flea market uh, January twenty eighth. We're also going to be giving away a super awesome prize pack if you make some purchases with us, or if you buy your tickets for the um, scholarship dinner, which is February second at the Centerton Country Club in Pittsgrove, New Jersey. Awesome event. We are looking at probably upwards of 300 people yeah, this year. Say, mm, can't messages, wait. Right we are going to like right double yeah. what we had. But this space is up. huge, totally able to accommodate big crowds. The auction baskets are ridiculous and amazing this year. I've got an awesome team um, on it. So, I mean... Every man, woman, and child can find something that they want to win at this event. It's it's totally awesome. We have, you know, amazing fishing baskets. We have outdoor baskets. I mean, if if you like to hunt, if you are into guns, if you love purses, if you like kids stuff. I mean, we've got you covered. The auction prizes are amazing. Are you rolling your eyes at me? I'd like to have a new gun. What's that? Anyways, it's going to be awesome. Here's here's the biggest thing. It all goes for the scholarship fund. So. Our little event last year, which we didn't really know what was going to happen, we were able to raise $10,000. We gave wow. out five scholarships for $2,500 wow. to these five recipients. And because we had no idea what last year was going to bring. The reception was absolutely amazing. So this year, we hope to do that much more and be able to give out more scholarships. The more money we make, the more we give out. It's all for the kids at the end of the day. Excellent. So make sure you apply if you are a high school senior and you've given back to your community through the outdoors. Go to the ikefoundation.org, fill out the scholarship application. You could be the recipient of one of our scholarships. Hey, if you live on the other side of the country, you can't make it, but you want to give, we can take donations as well through the website, and you can earmark it specifically for this if that's what you want to do. Very cool. Very Boom. cool. And, and they go to Ike Foundation, the ikefoundation.org? Yes. I, okay. Amazing work, Becky. Good job, Becky. Well done. Thank you very much. Josh. Very awesome. Uh, Brian DeCarpenter, Michael, what do, you, what do you got here? We have a special guest, I think, joining us, Eric and then we're going to roll out. What do you got? We're going to get our oh, man on. Oh, I forgot Suspicious. one last thing. Oh, what? Ooh. What, Becky? Hey, one of our awesome sponsors for Ike Live, Real Snot, yes? is giving a dollar for every bottle that oh. sells between now and it's the Bassmaster Classic, right? Yeah. So wow. go and buy Real Snot, please. A dollar for every single bottle wow. purchase is going to go to the foundation. Hey, Thank cool. you, Real Snot. That's amazing. That's awesome. Head over there, realsnot.com. Awesome Snot. Use the awesome promo sauce. code IKELIVE25. IKELIVE25. Oh, yes. Use that promo code, Ron. Dial. All right, Brian, what you got? What you got? My What's ass happening? is hurting. You chapped? Ty, my ass is we, hurting. We got a guest? We got a special guest. He's coming. He's coming, coming on. Oh, so we're did you waiting guys on touch on guest. all the deals, Mr. Yeah. Tacklebox gives Why are we waiting? Yeah, why are we waiting Real for this? Uh, yeah, why are we waiting for the guest? Let me uh, let me remind everybody. Touch upon it. Pete, they can watch Ike Live anytime. Anytime. They can go or back, listen. Or listen. They can go back two, three, four years and, I, and listen to the thousands I, of episodes. I don't recommend that. We'll try it. <laughs> uh, four, four years ago, the episodes were interesting. They were. And you can find us on iTunes, honest. Stitcher, yep. YouTube, IkeLive.com, and yep. of course, the best of Ike Live on Bassmaster.com. We uh, had technical difficulties back then, too. 
I know. <laughs> it hasn't changed. I know. We did. <laughs> we did. I, I don't know why. Does Bassmaster put anything on there where we're not talking about them? Like, is no, it all about, uh, like, anyone? That... No, nah, I mean, they, they, they generally put stuff that's related to pros Van Van. that fish the Bassmaster Tour, right. but, you know, they occasionally put some other funny stuff on there. They didn't put up our interview with their boy. They didn't? Mm. They deny this. Mm. Bassmaster, if you're listening or watching, put that shit up <laughs> immediately. <laughs> that usually encourages. Well, I'm not fishing that. your trail this year. <laughs> go, I got news. Go I got to. I got to just Tactics. drop into it while we're waiting. I am not fishing their trail. This what? Year. What? You just you kept saying you were fishing the whole time. What happened? <laughs> I'm just. I'm just <laughs> disgusted. Are you kidding? What? All right. <laughs> So, <laughs> are you kidding me right now? <laughs> it, well, let me tell you what happened. It's just, you know, um, on uh, Thursday of, I guess, the previous week, whatever, about a week ago, I get it. I get an email in the afternoon uh, from Bassmaster, which I've been getting a lot of emails from lately. So I'm, I'm like from, waiting for it. From Ed Bassmaster, I'm on, I'm on the waiting list. I'm on the. <laughs> I'm on the waiting list for the tournament, right? So I'm looking for an email to say you're off the waiting list. You can you're you can fish, right? And and it's like uh you know win a a trip with Jordan Lee. It's doing this, doing that, and I'm like ah you know, and it's getting late, it's getting close, and I'm and I look up and it's I clicked on it and it's like you we have a spot for you in the Bassmaster Opens, and I'm like yes, I think I told you or yeah. told somebody yes, I'm in the Opens. And it said you just gotta, you know, let us know by Monday that you want your spot, and, yeah. and it's your spot. So uh, a G, my marketing girl, got me tied up all day, you, talk, working oh, on you marketing. Blame a G now. Throw G right under the bus. But uh, it was well, it, it would have never happened anyway. But anyway, I call. I, we get done our meeting, right? And um, so it's like uh, twelve thirty. I call up, and they're like, "You're still on the waiting list." And and it's the answering service, right? So they're like, call the the head office. So I call the head office, and I'm like, they why they got me on the waiting list? Uh, you know, I want I want my spot. I'm I, I want to fish this year. Yeah. And they're like, you needed to call by nine o'clock this morning. Oh my God! You're and and me. I look back at the email, and sure enough, it says it right there. Oh! You got to call by 9 a.m., oh. which is the only thing I didn't read or see yeah. in the email, you know, and uh, I was three and a half hours late, called the next guy in line, instantly he responded and took the spot, so. Wow. I'm out. Damn FLW, it, coming back, baby. <laughs> yeah. Woo, jumping <laughs> ship. <laughs> jumping ship, baby. That's what I like. Jumping ship. Uh. So I'm signing up for those. Ah, it's all it all <laughs> it all happens the way it's supposed to happen. That's, you know what I mean? Know. There's there's something. I, I, either that or there's a life lessons about like reading the whole goddamn email. Could be that. I too. was Brosnick pointed. I was late to respond to even enter. You know what I mean? I was on the fence about you even weren't, fishing. You weren't this. into it. You weren't yeah. into it's it. It's like dude. they got me running all over the country. I, at at this point, I I want to I want to be focused on Bass University business. Yeah. I want to I want to stay closer to home. My little boy's eight. I want to take him fishing and yeah. coach his wrestling team. You know, I I'm kind of moving in a direction. You know, that you know I just I just wasn't sure about just yeah. well the difference doing that. between three events mm -hmm. that were all in the Northeast yeah. and five that are spread out throughout the whole throughout country. The country it's a big difference yeah, it's, for it's, the average guy. Well, I mean, a, a normal it, guy. You it's, know? A, it's like the old professional tournament. I mean, it's like it's like a full-time commitment. Right. And, um, you know, at this at this year, you know, I wasn't that, you know, for it. I, was, I decided, okay, I'm going to try it. Right. And, well, it didn't work out. So it happens for a reason. So I'm going to look into the – I'm really excited. That the Coast's tournament trail it's in the Northern schedule. Division is amazing. Lake Champlain in June are going to be spawning. Uh, Thousand Islands haven't fished for 12 years. Uh, the smallmouth are just exploding on gobies. They're five pounds Giants. now. Giants, yeah. Uh, I can't wait to go back there. And then Lake Erie had a buffalo, which I haven't been to for 10 years. So wow. uh, it's it's a smallmouth, you know, paradise. So yeah, that'll be good. Here at FLW. That'll be good. Brian I'll, be, Carpenter. I'll be calling tomorrow. Brian Carpenter, what do you got? <laughs> Brian. Uh, yeah, we're mashing the button on the computer to restart it because it's a... Uh, it's frozen. frozen. <laughs> I was thinking of a different F word, but uh, let it go. But let it, let go. it go. Yeah. Punch oh. it. So in we the don't face. we don't get the crank bass purse shops again. 
Is that what we were waiting on? Just hang hang tight with us. A couple more minutes. Pete, keep talking about what you did wrong. <laughs> <Is this, laughs> what you should have done different. Make the tape, the broadcast, yeah, I, or the Facebook feed. I've got just, some interesting facts. Keep, keep, keep talking. talking about what you did, didn't do right. No, wait. <laughs> should have done differently. I, I'll, do a, I'll do another trivia question here. I'll do another trivia question. Here it goes. Let's do a trivia question. What do we got back there we give away? Let's give something away. We got us. something. What is it? Becky's. Um, what do you got back there, Beck? We give something away here. I got a TH Marine hat. It's fabulous. Okay, we're gonna do a TH Marine hat, and, and we'll do a TH Marine uh, nut. Prop nut. Prop nut. What is that called? The a, no, no, wait, wait. Eliminator. I, yeah. That's eliminator. Good. Yeah. Nut. I need one of them. We're gonna do an eliminator. Nut. I liked prop nut. First prop nut. <laughs> and here is the question. <clears throat> and anybody can, if you want to guess in here, because I'm the only one that has the answer. You can go ahead and guess. Dave Brosnan. No. And that's not the answer. I want to know. <laughs> Thought I'd try. How old, how many years ago was the first kayak built? How how many years ago was the I have the answer right here. No, no. You can, the, you can play too. Fishing kayak or just a kayak in here, general? Here, back. I'll give it to you. I don't want nobody else to sit. Kayak. Are we talking about like cedar plant? No, no, no. Just kayak. Yes, kayak. How many years ago was the first kayak Dave's built? Leaving. How long ago? How many years ago? Uh, I'm going to say it, it was 80 years ago. It's incorrect. Is it, okay, hold on. Give me is it, a guess. I mean, I'm I'm thinking in the early 1900s, there was somebody kayaking what? around somewhere. Drunk, dude. Going through the rapids, right? <laughs> no. Keaton, do you know the answer to this question? Uh, I'm going to say 250 years ago. 250 years ago. That is incorrect. Wait, nobody's get this. They'll get it. This is obvious. How many? What, Dave? 88. All right, here. Incorrect. Me, can I give a hint? Yes, please. It's before the birth of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> You got to give Eric the answer because people are firing up the IM board wanting to win shit. I wanted to give a hit because... That's a, that's a great hit. It is before guys. the birth of Jesus. All right. It's before the birth of Jesus. 1000 threatening... BC. <laughs> We're going to get threatening messages. <laughs> Some Egyptian somewhere. Is that what Moses was oh like passed down the river in? Oh. Was it a kayak? or Moses loaded a kayak. <laughs> no. Sorry, one more time. It's a lot of kayaks. You're right. <laughs> Okay, so no one might get this one. No, but somebody's going to get it, man. People were close. No. Oh, oh. Hang on. Oh, we got it! No. We, got, we got it! I got an interesting uh, comment oh, on age Dude. of fishermen. Do you know the average age of the Bassmaster? I talked about this earlier. Yeah, the Bassmaster Elite Angler for the last 10 years? 32. 43. I guess I'd have to give it to you. It's 40.8 years. It's 41 years. Kyle. And it's been steady wow. every single year for the last 10 years. Really? Wow. It has not declined like uh, maybe some of us think it, it, it has. Yeah. But I, I really think with, you know, the high school and the college stuff and the kayak fishing, you know, I think the hmm. the, the age of that angler is, is, is likely to get smaller. But it hasn't. Wow. It really hasn't. I didn't realize it was that old. Yeah. It's interesting. By the way, we got a winner to the trivia question. By the age 45, you've hit your peak in our sport. Wow. How about that? 45. 45 years old. You're done. Yep. With the exception of, like, Denny Brower. Yeah. I didn't say done. You peaked. Peaked. And, um, you know, Denny Brower, some... Some of the others, like uh, Pete Gluzak bitches, they continue to perform <laughs> after the age of 45 very right, well. Right, right. But, uh, uh... It turned out someone got it, by the way. Someone got it. We All right, aware. the answer to the trivia yep. question is... 4,000 years ago. 4,000 years ago! Evan Rude. Shout the first Evan. kayak was created. Yeah, nice. How about oh, that, Dave? Got it, got it, you were a little off. Go, 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 go. We got it. Kyle, say something. What's up? Whoa, oh, we have success. The time. All right. What's up? All right, now listen to me. Brian DeCarpenter, we've got a very 
Very, 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 very special guest I joining know us. Who we have now. We have a very special guest joining us. Very We've kept it in the dark the entire show. But I'd like to announce right now, Brian, we have a a winner, a past winner of a, a Ike Live Flambo promotion on tonight. Who do we Brian, who do we have here? This is my man Kyle Curry. Kyle Curry? How you doing tonight, Kyle? We're going to rock it out for you boys, Grand Lake style. Yeah. Come on now. Here we go. <laughs> what you know about Jersey? Here we go. All right, all right, all right. You ain't ready for it. You ain't ready for it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Ike Live Show. We paddle in the yaks and talk. Keep playing bow. Got the Toyota sitting in the parking lot. Yo, Hummingbird is out because the rants is hot. Yo, TNH Marine gonna make you scream because the Rapala is so mean and Blue is so clean. There ain't no doubt, baby, in my mind, who is the greatest? of all time. Well, you might say Corn or KBD, but have they ever cussed a Labrador on live TV? I'm freezing up. I need some real snot, because my back folks go to your spot. Like Zona's hair is fantastic. 2018, Ike's taking the classic. Part well. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm eating liquid mayhem on my saltine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. So good. What's up, I Glide Crew? Very nice. Very nice. Oh, wow. Man, that, I think Brian Carter, I think that was one of the best live performances we've ever had on the show. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Damn it. But by yeah. the way, let me let me add, Kyle, you look amazing with all those flambo boxes stacked around you. Man, I tell you what, I got more than I know what to do with I. <laughs> You can get I'll rid of the uh, brown paper bag. Sandwich yeah, bags. No, hey, I, I'll be honest with you. I donated my brown paper bags, and I, they went to a very, very uh, needy uh, young fisherman. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. You, you didn't give them a flambeau or two. You gave them the brown paper <laughs> bag. <laughs> I'm this stack was bigger at one time. All right. <laughs> I have been given a couple of these away because... If I don't give some of them away, I spend more money at Tackle Warehouse. Fill them up. <laughs> and I get more meat. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? TW. Woo. Spread the love. Right here, Tackle Warehouse, TW. Yeah. T-Dub. T-Dub. Kyle, how is the weather down at Grand Lake right now? Man, I tell you what, we're buried under about... Oh, three, four inches of snow right now. But that ain't creeping the big ones from biting, dude. And they they're going to be ready for you when you get here in April. So I hope you got your grass and your patterns figured out, my man. <laughs> Woo! I'll be ready. I'll be ready. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> big thanks to Flambo. Big thanks to Real Snot for hooking me up. Big thanks to Liquid Mayhem for the condiments. It's been <laughs> awesome, man. I tell you what. The FedEx guy showed up at my house at about 8 p.m. one night, and he said, hey, I want to tell you something. I've been avoiding this stop all day long. <laughs> and when I saw what was in the back of his truck, I understood why. <laughs> it was about 10 boxes full of flambo tackle boxes. Woo. And from small to big to bags to cases to everything you want, the new I Quotient series. Woo. Been tackled advantage of that loving it all man loving it all i wanted to come back throw you guys a little thank you do a little rap tune and say i appreciate it well kyle we we appreciate it and uh you you deserve it and congratulations uh, congratulations and keep up the music keep up the inspiration and wish yeah. you a a very successful fishing in uh, 2018 thank you i same to you i'll see you april 26th at wolf creek ranch you got it. Kyle Curry, everybody. Kyle, baby.
budding rap star from uh, Grand Lake, Oklahoma. My oh, man. That's awesome. That wow. Was great. Phenomenal rap, Phenomenal. man. Love that. He likes to eat liquid mayhem, too. I know. We Thank all you, like Kyle. it. I like it. I brush my teeth with that shit, man. Gargle with it in the morning Good and everything. Stuff. We got, you got to play that one on the way out, his, his winning video. That was amazing. Maybe you should. Uh, I, I think uh, I'm going to call the show to the end here. What do you think? Uh, it's only been... Yep. It's time. <laughs> it's time. We didn't set a record, but we did a good job. Yeah, we did a good job. <laughs> Let me thank everybody tuning in tonight. Uh, it's been an awesome show. Uh, it's been a great show talking about kayak fishing, sweeping the world, changing the way we fish for sure. I want to thank everybody tonight, Pete, starting with you, Dave Brozick, Keaton, thank, thank you for you, being here tonight. Miss Rebecca, Eric, Brian, thank you guys. Also want to thank uh, Ron and Branton Champion for joining us. I want to thank Chris Payne for joining us. And finally, uh, Kyle Curry for joining us. Oh, also, uh, Mr. Robinson joined us. Mr. Robinson. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Good, good luck next week. Break good luck. Robinson. Coming in second to the Eagles. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> want to thank all the sponsors uh, of this show. And finally, once again, I always feel bad saying this, but, um, man, our apologies. Sorry to Dick Morris. Uh, we ran out of time again, but we'll eventually get you on. <laughs> Thanks for watching tonight. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. You got it?